Okay, hi. Uh, so, uh, I want to talk about uh, the decipherment of linear B, and uh, unlike the uh, title that pre might have scared some people off with linear, and you might have thought that it has something to do with mathematics, it has to do with, but it mostly has to do with uh, archaeology and uh, languages. So, uh, linear B is the name of a script that was uh, found uh, originally on Crete. It's uh, it is, so just to uh, have some uh, geographical uh, uh, grounding. So this is Greece. Uh, Athens is around here. If you don't see it, uh, this is Crete. With uh, Knossos is uh, the main the, the interesting places from the Knossos, which is the uh, main uh, palace complex uh, was in Knossos, uh, Minon uh, civilization, the labyrinth with the Minotaur is in Knossos. Uh, another interesting place is in Kenne, probably, and uh, uh, we'll discuss the relation between the two of them. So, uh, we're talking about ancient Greece. So, uh, ancient classical Greece, as we know, it started about 800 years BC. So that's the time when uh, Plato was, and Aristotle was, and uh, uh, many other uh, important people were there. The city-states of Athens and everything. It was dated to around. Uh, it's this, it starts at around 800 BC. It's, uh, you can say it started when uh, the Greek uh, Dark Ages ended, and uh, uh, the uh, the Greek city-states adopted the Phoenician writing. So, uh, before that, there was almost no writing. And even at that time, there was already Homer's uh, famous uh, Iliad and the Odyssey, which were even then considered sort of myths and legend. And that, that was how they were considered even, well, in the 18th uh, century uh, in our time, they were considered as interesting uh, stories by Homer, some, some legends, mostly myth. And then came Hendrik Schliemann and found somewhere along the coast of Turkey, uh, found the famous Troy, and uh, myth became uh, something that was grounded in fact. And uh, so you have Troy that was found, and Mykene was uh, found in 1876, also by Schliemann, which is a whole different, interesting story to tell about uh, how we started the. Uh, uh, sort of uh, modern archaeology is in, in, a, in a way started around the time of Schlima, who wasn't a professor, a professional archaeologist. But anyway, uh, we have certain, suddenly uh, many new, new places in Greece that were excavated, and uh, great uh, civilizations uh, that were predating the uh, classical Greece by at least half a millennium. So, uh, we're talking about around 1400 BC. And th there came a guy named Arthur Evans around uh, 1890, and he asked the, the, the following question If you have uh, very interesting big civil civilizations in, on Crete and in uh, ancient Greece, how, how come they don't have, we don't have any writing belonging to them? We, we don't see any, any scripts, any, no, no nothing in those excavations. There, there should be something. So what he did is uh, he found uh, evidences of scripts on uh, uh, women coming from, from Crete. They had some med medallions with writing on them, something that looked like uh, writing. So he came to, to Gnosis and started then excavating. And pretty fast, like during in one week, he found the found, uh, a lot of interesting uh, tablets, which looked something like this. So it's clay tablets, uh, not really uh, nice. Uh, look, looks sort of ugly, with something that is definitely script on them. So he, he actually found three types of scripts. Uh, so the earliest one is something called hieroglyphics. This one is dated to around 2000 to 1600 uh, BC, so it lasted for about 400 years. 
He called hieroglyphs because they somehow resemble uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs, no other uh, Then they were uh, changed to something that he called linear A, uh, because, well, you just see linear lines. That, that, that's the reason for, for, the, for the name, it's just lines. The, and linear A is dated from around 750 BC to around the 14th century BC, so another 200 years. And then it changed to uh, linear A, which is those tablets that I've shown. So, linear B. Yeah. Li sorry, to linear B, yeah. So, it's, it looks like the same script, uh, but it, it has a, uh, some distinctions that you, that can, you can, by which you can tell it's a different, uh, it's actually a different writer. Uh, one of them is the distinguishing the lines that go under each uh, row, and uh, the the signs are, are different. There are some some of the signs are the same, some are uh, really different, and you have quite a lot of of, of, of those tablets uh, in uh, Knossos on Crete. He found around uh, I think three to five thousand uh, pieces of those. Uh, yeah, so what, what, what do you do when you, start, when you have uh, new uh, languages, new unknown uh, things to explore? So first of all, uh, most of the tablets found were of linear B. It is the, well, and, and that's, why, that's why most people start working with linear B, because it's, uh, you, it, most of the tablets are of linear B, and it's the most recent, so it's, uh, uh, there is more chance to, to decipher it. Don't understand what it says. Uh, so, yeah, um, uh, yeah. So, so, how, why, why we even have those uh, clay tablets? Uh, the, the, how they were made? It's just a simple clay tablet that you write on and then leave in the sun to dry, and that's the, the clay hardens enough uh, to have the writing on it. On, on them. What happened is that uh, the place where the found, top, top, most of the tablets were found was were, were in a palace which burned down. And during, during the, in the fires that burned down the palace, the clay uh, hardened into pottery. And that's why those, they survived for 3,000 years. The, uh, because there is, uh, a, in one of the cases, uh, the, there is a story that he left a cache of unearthed uh, tablets. And there was a rain in the night, and in the morning they were just lumps of clay. So they were dug up, dug up, dug up, and after uh, after three thousand years, and destroyed overnight by rain. So uh, at least for, for for some of them, it weren't big. Those are linear B tablets. One from the fire. Or... The fire is mostly linear B tablets. Yeah, it's a writing in. Uh, uh, yeah. It's a writing that was found uh, originally only on. Uh, Concrete. That's why uh, Evans uh, thought at the time there were two competing civilizations. There was the Minoan civilization on Crete and the Cycladian Islands, and there were the uh, Mycenaean civilization on the mainland and the Peloponnese. And uh, somehow uh, Evans assumed that he had enough uh, political uh, power and leverage, or at least uh, scientific, to uh, convince everybody that this is not Greek. This is some. Uh, Extinct, probably uh, script. It's it's well, it's obviously not a Greek script, but it's it also encodes a non-known language. Yeah, so so you have actually you, you have actually two questions. So what is the language that those? That, that's the main well, one of the main questions. What what is the language of uh, those signs? That's behind those signs. Uh, so he he managed to convince everybody that it's not uh, that it's not Greek. That it's Minoan, it's something maybe similar to Cypriot script or to maybe Etruscan or any any of the other uh, uh, civilizations around that time, but that, that it's definitely not not, not Greek. And, and actually, everybody who said that it might be Greek got got, uh, got kicked. I mean, there there was a professor that was just fired from everywhere and uh, well, politics. Anyway, so um, what what you can say about this script? Uh, what it's not very. 
Yeah, it's not Greek, obviously. Uh, uh, so, what what can can we see? We can see a few things. So first, uh, this is a script which is uh, which was used only by account. Well, it's, it was used mostly for accounting things. It looked a lot like counting. Uh, it was used in mainly in like uh, accounting of stores that like in the palace. Who bought what? Who brought how many wheels of grain? How many swords were produced? Names of people and, and so on. So. You see here the, the numerical system. That's uh, actually they have had a decimal uh, decimal uh, type. Of, uh, uh, they have they have numbers. So they have the integers, the tens, uh, hundreds, thousands, and they have a sound a sign for uh, ten thousand as well. So it's it's a, it's a positional sign. So this one, for example, says uh, one thousand two hundred thirty-nine. Okay, so they didn't have a side for zero. Position. Uh, and well, you have you see all, all those scoodles. Um, so what what lies behind behind them? So there are actually two types of things that we can we can see. Some of the signs are ideograms, and some of them are syllables. How you can how you can say that? Uh, ideograms usually appear next to numerals, which you somehow learn to recognize. Ideograms are just a simple image that stands for a whole world of concept. It can be man, woman, uh, for example, this one is, is, a, is a woman, uh, chariot, horse, pig, and so forth. And you have uh, the other signs, uh, which are the syllables. How do you how can you know that it's a syllable? But this one is like six women. This seven. one says something women seven, but yes. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how to count. Well, <laughs> you just need to count out with it. This one is the six. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, when, when, you, when you come to a new uh, language, how can you tell which one is, uh, what, what is the basic uh, uh, unit? So it, it, it mainly may, may depends on, on the count of, diff, on, on, of distinct uh, Squiggles. So in, lat in languages that have an alphabet, so a, let a distinct letter for every consonant and for every vowel, you usually have around up to 40 letters. Like Russian has 36, I think. It's one of the biggest uh, uh, modern Russian. If you have uh, a language such as Chinese, which, has, uh, which is a, basically a diagram, so you have uh, a, let a sign for every word, you have thousands of different uh, words. Syllables, on the other hand, it's uh, each sign here is a consonant and a vowel. So you have around, well, between 60 and 100 uh, signs, which, which is the case here. We have around, uh, I think, uh, 98 different symbols. Uh, so it's, it's a good guess that it's, it, it's, uh, it's a syllabic language. Uh, what else? So we know that it's written left to right, and uh, well, yeah, we, we know that it's not Greek, right? Um, <laughs> uh, no, you know that it's written left to right because uh, you can see it on on most tablets. You can see that the alignment is on the left and the the, the empty spaces. You can see just everything is aligned to the left. This one's aligned to the right. No, this one's aligned to the left. So the word starts here, it ends, then the uh, other word. So it goes like that. So you have a word. So you have blanks on, 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 the, on the right and no blanks on the left. Except for that really obvious one there. Well, this might... Well, that's just a yeah, okay. simple image, but, but in, in most yeah, cases, yeah. And, and yeah, except this one, but you, you just... That's kind of... <laughs> yeah, that's dumb. Anyway, so uh, uh, those are the symbols. Uh, ignore for a minute uh, the lettering next to them. Uh, so uh, that's I think the, all of the signs that are possible. So you have these uh, signs. Uh, the numbers are the numbers used by uh, 
by the next generation of researchers, by uh, Barrett and by uh, Alice Colbert, who will come to in a second, uh, just to write the number instead of the figure every time you look at text, right? So it's easier to, to work with numbers than with drawing squiggles. Uh, okay, and you have those, those are the pictograms. So some of them are really easy to understand. Some of them are, well, understood later by, because some of them had text attached to them which says uh, uh, what they are. So this is the squiggle for chariot, for sword, arrow, and so forth. Okay. But there is a part of the unicode. Yeah, there, there is unicode for them, and you, you can write the... Uh, yeah. Okay, so that that's... Uh, I'm, I'm showing you a bit more than uh, what was uh, known uh, in the early in 19th century. So yeah, so the, the first excavations, as I said, were uh, around 19th, 19th century, and uh, there wasn't there was a, there were a lot of theories uh, up until I think uh, the, well pretty much until the fir first World War. I think the main discovery up, uh, until then is the discovery of linear B not only on Crete but in the mainland as well. They were found in, in Pylos and uh, in the Mekena as well. So it's kind of weird to have, if, if you have a script that belongs to, mm -hmm. to, Minoan, to a Minoan civilization, which is supposed to be a, re a rival of the Mekena civilization, you, you don't find, you're not supposed to, find, to, be, to be able to find those scripts on the mainland or, or in Mekena. But the, the, the idea that it's, it's not Greek was so strong that uh, people just ignored it. So I mean, they came up with different excuses like, well, uh, slaves or I don't know something like uh, just different excuses to to, to that. Yeah, but anyway, it doesn't really help uh, with the uh, summit. And then uh, came a woman named uh, Alice uh, Ober, which decided to uh, just systematically write down all the thousands and thousands of uh, tablets that were found and, and to try to find some, something interesting. And then indeed, indeed she found out uh, yeah, so that's, that's a number, numeric system, so science for 1,000. I don't know what they do with more than 1,000. Maybe they don't have those findings. Anyway, so what uh, Alice Cobra found is what's known as Alice Cobra's triplets is is triplets of words which are which have the first two uh, signs the same and only the uh, ending is different. Okay, so you have for example like this, so you see a diff different stem and the ending is different, right? So again, same word, same root, and the, the ending is different. And uh, the uh, genius idea was that. W w what those squiggles actually meant is the, the following. How, how, can, how can you have a different ending but, but the, the same word? Sometimes, yes. So, you, you understand the, the idea? So it's, it's the same word which is supposed to be probably some noun or, or, or a poem, or a verb, right? So it's just a different inflection. So uh, it's, it, it, apparently, uh, Linear B is a highly inflected language, so it changes a lot with, when it's, with gender and with time and like uh, like, like in Hebrew, for example, yeah, the the Omri, Omrot, and so forth. There's a different uh, 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 well, it's called inflection. <laughs> so, well, yeah. So it's the same sort of things happen here, and uh, the the genius idea was that. Uh, we don't have much time. Yeah, I'll try to finish that. So, so the idea is that uh, this uh, syllable is actually split. So the consonant part, the first part, is part of the stem, and the vowel part is part of the finish. And that's why you have you can have the same consonant and some, sometimes the same, sometimes not. So, for example, look at those two sides. <coughs> They ha they have the third word is different is a different uh, sign, but if you assume that the consonant 
here and the consonant here is the same one, and they, 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 that they differ just in the bubble, right? And the same here. If you assume that those are the same types of inflections, so the difference between those two images is the consonant, but the bubble is the same, right? So what you can do is arrange all the letters that you know into a grid. Yeah, so if you have, well, you, know, you can again ignore the uh, English letters. Uh, you can have every two, yeah, like, like here. Uh, two letters which are here, they share the same consonant. Two signs which go like that share the same vowel. So you can give, build a grid. Uh, it took a few iterations by a guy named uh, Michael Ventris, who eventually did the uh, did, all, did most of the work, because Alice Cooper said he died uh, in 1950. Uh, that work was by an architect, actually by an architect uh, who did it in his spare time, uh, uh, named Michael Venters. And he uh, built this grid. Okay, so now you have the grid. What, what do you do next? Uh, next you take a, a lucky guess, or at least a guess. So there were a few words that were repeating everywhere in, in all the in, 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 in all of the tablets, and there are a few words which were specific to a region. And he took three words which were repeating only in on Crete, and he but they were repeating in, in in a lot of tablets, and he just decided to say, well, what's if those those are, those are city names? So we know this sign is, is, is a pure vowel because it appears only in, in the beginning. Yeah, so you have the con those signs which are pairs of consonant and uh, vowel, but you have also signs which only appear at the beginning, or almost often appear only at the beginning at the, uh, of the word. So he said, okay, so let's assume that city is uh, Amisos, which is an uh, important port in, in Greece. So this would be a, ah, me, me, so. So in order to uh, see if, it, if this is correct, we see that me and me have the same vowel. So they should be in the same row in our grid. And indeed, they are. Right? So because they share the same vowel. OK, so we know that this one is a so. So we look where those two are. And then, happily, they're in the same row with the O. With the, with the vowel. So we have a city named something O, something O, S O, which is Knossos. We already discussed it. And the last one is Tulisos, which is an, 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 another uh, port in Greece. And Knossos is Knossos. So Knossos is Konoso, and you, uh, in, in all of the cases, you somehow ignore the fact that uh, there is no S. Maybe the archaic writing or something like that. But assuming this is correct, you can start, you have already names for vowels and for, uh, uh, for some of the vowels and for some of the consonants, and you can continue reading on. And he started reading on, and he found out that it was actually Egypt. Uh, Greek, sorry, not Egypt. It was actually Greek. It was an ancient uh, version of, uh, archaic version of Greek, uh, 400 years, uh, 500 years uh, older than uh, uh, the Greek used by Homer, but still Greek, and he could translate uh, most of the tablets and make a really uh, well. It's a, it's a huge discovery that basically, unlike what well, there are many implications besides that you can see the daily life of uh, people around the Greek, uh, around the Crete and the in the ancient times. You can see that. Uh, Mikene was actually the ruling power at the time. So, and not Minoan civilization like so, because Minoan used the Mikene right, right in the Greek. So, uh, uh, so there were a lot, of, a lot of lucky guesses here, a lot of hard work. Uh, and uh, now we know much more about the uh, ancient, uh, ancient war and the ancient war that we knew before. The, the work. I'm talking about those done in 1953 uh, by Michael Ventris and John Chabik, which was uh, a Greek uh, linguist. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah.
time for questions? Yeah, that's, by the way, that's how you write my name. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, they don't have an L. They have uh, substitutions for different language letters. So, so, for example, if you want, you can try to well, find your, your names. So you will probably be D, me, T, Ri. You don't have three, you have to add, if you have two consonants, mm -hmm. you, have, you add the uh, vowel. You have to add an vowel. The convention was to make it two. You need to do. So, since it's Greek, and the, actually it's So the L and R is the, is, is the same letter. Same letter. Mm -hmm. So, any, any, any questions? So, what's linear A? We don't know linear A is pretty much the same script, but it's probably, well, we have much less uh, data about it, much less data that uh, are preserved, and uh, you don't have enough, um, well, if you try to use the letters from uh, linear, linear B and the sounds from linear B into linear substitute into linear A, you don't get, get the meaningful answer. So, it's probably Probably different, really different uh, language because well, so there are many many signs that said it's a different language. Probably what happened at around 450 BC is that Mekanan Mekanan civilization uh, maybe captured the Minoan civilization. At least uh, the script the, the script in uh, in, uh, in Crete uh, changed. So how it changed? They used they continued using the same letters or the same signs or pretty much the same signs. But instead of using their own language, which you know what is, they just substituted in for Greek letters. Mm -hmm.